Religion in the larger society as a subdiscipline in sociology has been transformed with globalization and newer schools of thought or perspectives. This week, in Chapter 3, my earlier reservations about the classification of Durkheim's definition of religion as substantive will become much more obvious. In Chapter 3, the expansive discussion of Durkheim within the functionalist framework should give everyone pause regarding the initial classification as substantive. Nonetheless, the ambiguity in the text performs a very important pedagogical function in and of itself. In the sociology of religion, we move to a cognitive level in terms of the material that is well beyond the possibility of clear-cut right and wrong answers. While much of the Enlightenment thought about religion that gave birth to the sociology of religion, including Durkheim, presumed an evolutionary model that began with primitive or preliterate religions, we will bypass this early stage and pick up with traditional societies to introduce Peter Berger's sacred canopy. Humans construct and maintain an entire world of social experience. In this earlier world, the traditional society, but also the preliterate society, the natural and the supernatural melded seamlessly. With social differentiation, that is the differentiation characteristic of the later what we call traditional society, a codified creed emerged under a core of religious professionals. Once an abstract hierarchical conception of the supernatural has become dogma, the separation in the believer's mind between the natural world and the supernatural world has been accomplished. We're going to bypass this complex set of ideas for the nonce, but you should see that we here point to Weber's understanding of rationalization. The types of theories outlined in Chapter 3 should be familiar. They consist of the functional, both functional and structural functional, the functions of religion and dysfunctions, and conflict or conflict theory. The symbolic perspective, symbolic interactionist perspective, is delayed as a separate category because of its deployment within all theories, all types of theories, and all forms of analysis. A third type here will be the synthesis and open systems. Within the functional framework, there are two important distinctions, the functional and the structural functional. Uh, the earlier anthropologist Malinowski noted basic human needs and regularized patterns of behavior around these. So religion in this context reduces anxiety about helplessness the hope and sources of power that transcend individual resources thus form a function. This functional level or this functional analysis is really formed around or at the level of basic human needs. A second type that emerges with Radcliffe Brown, another anthropologist, is closer to Durkheim. Here, the function is not related to individual needs, but at the societal level, related to society as a whole or the system as a whole. This should spark out uh, the idea of social facts. For Durkheim, and remember that Durkheim became a secular sociologist emerging from an Orthodox Jewish community in France. For Durkheim, religious beliefs are collective representations 
They expressed the dependent relationship between the individual and society. For Durkheim, what is venerated is called God, but it is really society. And Durkheim, like many of the sociologists emerging as part of Enlightenment thought, looked to preliterate, uh, sort of animistic religions or totemistic religions, and the totem or the totemic principle as a mode of explaining more uh, later, more sophisticated, uh, complex, differentiated forms of religious um, beliefs and expressions. For Durkheim, the totem is an object or a living thing. Uh, it is often mistaken as an object of work, worship. And what is important for Durkheim is what the totem represents. That is, the god of the clan, the totemic principle, can therefore be nothing other than the clan itself, personified and represented to the imagination under the visible form of the animal or vegetable that serves as the totem. The soul is a symbolic representation of the representation of the relationship between the individual and society. For Durkheim, the functions or key functions of religion are the creation of meaning or the sacralization of cultural values, belonging and identity, such that the ceremonial rituals, rituals perform cohesive functions. They bring people together. They also form a revitalizing function, making people aware of their common bonds, and the euphoric function, or establishing a sense of well-being. The conflict theory emerges, or is still linked here to initially, two different types, there are several different types, actually three different types, for Karl Marx uh, with his uh, Das Kapital and the inevitability of uh, the communist revolution. Religion was an opiate of the people. A second type of conflict is interreligious conflict, uh, a, a phenomena with which we are intimately familiar in contemporary American society. This is manifest in anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-Catholicism, often referred to as the last acceptable prejudice. And then the third type of conflict is secularization, or emerges as part of secular, uh, secularization. Here, the conflict, Im the conflict occurs between religion or religious and secular authorities. Open systems presume that conflict and functionalist theories are not mutually exclusive or inherently contradictory. Religious symbols are the key to meaning making in both types of theories. Religion as such is not an empirically accessible object. It can only be studied through concrete forms and practices that engage and function through religious symbols. So the study of religion, regardless of perspective, necessarily, by definition, involves the analysis of religious beliefs and practice as expressed through religious symbols.